This video is sponsored by Displate. You've got a lot of options if you're in the market for a book-style foldable, with at least seven manufacturers offering a great many takes on phones that turn into tablets. But for whatever reason, that rich tapestry hasn't trickled down to flip-type foldables. Without Google services, Huawei's beautiful P50 Pocket was DOA in global markets, a budget competitor from TCL was canceled before release, and Motorola, well, seems to have lost the plot with its Razer line. As a result, Samsung's Galaxy Z Flip family has come to dominate the clamshell category, an incumbent flip phone running essentially unopposed. So when Oppo invited media to London to witness the launch of a product that stands a good chance of changing all that, well, I was on a plane faster than you can say, flip the script. I'm Michael Fisher, and I've spent a week with that product, a flip phone with a nearly invisible crease on the inside, a very visible screen on the outside, and some confusing software choices that make you wonder if its competitive price is competitive enough. There's no reason to bring a product to market if you're only going to duplicate what the competition already offers. So Oppo took aim at Samsung's most tender soft spots. The N2 Flip answers the gutter-like trench of the Galaxy Flip 4's display with a crease so subtle that when you're using the phone, it's nearly undetectable, both to the eye and the fingertip. When you close it, it claps flat without a gap. And while it's closed, you get a lot more space to spread out on the N2's cover screen than you do on Samsung's. This outer AMOLED is the biggest thing setting the N2 apart, and also its biggest missed opportunity. To put this into perspective, remember that ultra-portable Android phone I covered a couple summers back, the Unihertz Jelly 2? This cover screen is larger than that whole phone's screen, which means that Oppo, if it wanted, could let you run the entire phone without opening it. Instead, what it does is give you six widgets for your camera, your calendar, timers, voice memo, the forecast, and earbud management. And if that sounds familiar, <laughs> yep, you get almost exactly the same thing on the much smaller cover screen of the Galaxy Flip even though the Find N2 Flip has vastly more display area. Now, I had the opportunity to ask an Oppo employee about this, which is one of the reasons I attend launch events, and he said the company wanted to keep the cover display simple to use, which, you know, is totally fair. But there's a big difference between clean and undercooked. For example, I can't read Gmail out here, just the subject line of an email, which isn't always enough to know whether I need to open the phone or not. The Galaxy Flip does let me do that, again, even though it has a smaller screen. Also, if I get multiple messages from the same person in, say, Telegram, the Oppo will only show me the last one I received. Samsung outdoes it there, too, and let's look beyond Samsung. Rewind it to the razors that Motorola has been selling for three years, things get truly absurd. That phone lets me reply to messages on a keyboard or using Google's voice dictation. I can sign into my accounts with two-factor authentication. I can unlock it with a PIN if I can't reach the phone's fingerprint scanner. And I can run pretty much any app that'll fit on the screen. All on a product line that started in 2019. Oppo? Well, Oppo lets me reply to emails with canned responses, or emoji. Oh, and while I'm at it, Motorola shows me notifications that I can actually see, instead of these postage stamps for ants. Oppo says it plans to rapidly upgrade the cover screen capabilities, and frankly, it had better. We saw a Spotify widget on stage at the launch event that should replace the tiny, buggy media player controls we're currently stuck with, and I'm told that Google Voice Dictation for replies is also coming soon. But in its current form, the Find N2's biggest differentiator only truly shines when you're using its cameras. I got the chance to put those cameras to use in London, where, as I said, Oppo flew me along with a cadre of media and influencers to attend this phone's global launch event. On the plane ride over, I ran into the number one reason Oppo's cover screen makes more sense when I was trying to take a selfie on my Samsung. See, up to this point, it's been harder to frame up a selfie on a flip phone because you're using a horizontal cover screen as a viewfinder for a vertical camera. 
Well, just by rotating that display, the Find N2 Flip corrects that, which makes it much easier to get the shot you want, whether you're going handheld with the phone closed or propping it up as its own tripod. Oh, pro tip, if you're going to use the palm detection shutter option, don't do what I did and assume it works like Samsung, where just holding up a hand is enough. For Oppo, you got to spread those fingers. A bunch of us ended up discovering that together at the media dinner the night before the device launch, which led to a lot of unintentional selfies. Look how dumb I felt. How about the cameras as a whole? Well, the Find N2 Flip uses the same primary sensor as the Find N2 and OnePlus 11. And if you've seen my reviews of those phones, you'll know that the more I use them, the more my instinctive revulsion about the hype around the Hasselblad partnership kind of melts away. As I said in the Find N2 review, I like the way the color science handles the contrast in a moody night shot, respecting the drama is, I think, how I put it. And as I said in the OnePlus review, features like the master color filters and the X-Pan panoramic emulation are actually quite fun to play with. Even if you don't dig the gimmicks, the sheer resolution of the 50 megapixel main sensor means that at 2x zoom, the N2 Flip can produce a sharper photo than the Galaxy Flip's 12 megapixel sensor. For video, Oppo uses its custom Mary Silicon X for noise reduction in low light, which you can see here on the fringes of this shot from the London Underground. Watch how the noise kind of disappears when I turn on the AI mode. And there's also some impressive stabilization despite the lack of OIS. I used this phone to capture my first taste of a traditional warm ale on a visit to my first real English pub. I used it to recreate a photo I took 17 years ago, when England was the first country I visited beyond the borders of my own. I used it to tell that story on Instagram from that same location. And I used it in still and video mode to immortalize new memories in old places with friends both new and old. Bringing the Samsung back alongside for context, the Galaxy will almost always go brighter, and on the whole, I trust Samsung's HDR more in a tricky setting. The Galaxy also has a wider angle, higher resolution, ultra-wide camera. Oppo tends to produce richer colors, which, as I've mentioned, I kind of like, and that added punch combines with its selfie-centric software to better separate subject from background when a person is involved. If it were just about the pictures, I'd probably prefer the Find N2 flip cameras on the whole. But it's not just about the cameras, so I'll explain why I'll be sticking with my Samsung after a word from the folks who helped me decorate my new apartment. By now, you probably know that I've got a lot of Star Trek stuff on my walls. But what I haven't had is art that recognizes and celebrates today's space exploration knowledge and ambitions. Until now. This video is sponsored by Displate, which is all about taking those passions that inspire you and putting them up on your walls for all to see. Displate has over a million options. Designs from your favorite movies, games, and shows, plus a ton of original artwork, too. Keep in mind, these aren't just posters. The designs are actually printed on metal. And no, you don't have to drill anything into your walls because they come with a simple, safe system to mount them magnetically. Very futuristic. Oh, and speaking of the future, you knew I had to get at least one Star Trek displate. And I don't feel bad about the splurge because for each design sold, displate plants a tree. So spruce up your space with a great alternative to canvas or paper posters. And hey, save some money while you do it. Use the discount link in the description for 22% off up to two displates and 33% off three or more. Thanks to Displate for sponsoring this video. Consistency is what you get when a phone brand is on its fourth generation of foldables, and that's exactly what Oppo can't yet provide on its first flip phone. I know we just talked a lot about the cameras, but they are chock full of examples of compromised user experience. As on most Chinese phones, you can't double click the power button to quickly launch this camera. Instead, you have to use the volume rocker, which only works when the screen is off and doesn't work at all if you're listening to music. I lost count of the number of photos I missed because of this. 
If you film in 4K, you can only do that with the main camera. No ultra-wide, and you also can't shoot in 4K if you turn on the cover screen. For some reason, the phone will bust you down to 1080p. Back to 1080p. Very dumb. Very dumb. Uh, that's not how you do it. That's, yeah. Do, do, not, do not penalize me for using the Halo feature of the device. Thanks. Let's move on to the foldy bit. It doesn't have the confident lock-in of Samsung's set-it-and-forget-it stiffness, or even as much tension as Motorola's newest Razer. You might ask why this matters. Well, beyond getting the camera angle you want when you're using it as a tripod, consider the situation where I had it propped up in YouTube mode to remember how to tie a double Windsor necktie knot. Don't judge me, thank you. It actually held up okay until I got to the hard part, whereupon, of course, it flopped itself down onto the basin. Fortunately, I could still see it well enough to tie the knot, but, you know, a floppy hinge? That's not what you want. Neither is a wonky accelerometer, but that's just what my review device demonstrated when I closed it and put it down, only to discover that time and again the cover display was upside down. Oppo let me test a second review sample, which did a little better at this, but it still happened much more often than it should have. And it's not all bad stuff. As I say, it's just inconsistent. The IPX4 water resistance means the phone is immune from splashing water from any direction, so even though it's not the IPX8 of Samsung's foldables, I think it's fine. The lack of wireless charging does bug me, though, and while this thing has the biggest battery ever fitted to a flip foldable, I found endurance only average, even taking into account my added use from all the camera testing and travel over the course of a week. On a busy day, there was no way I was getting to bedtime without a top-up. On the plus side, the N2 Flip can rapid charge at 44 watts with a Super VOOC charger, which makes it much faster than Samsung. It can go from zero to full in just an hour. That's a good thing if you've got a lot of old OnePlus chargers lying around. And speaking of OnePlus, this phone runs the same ColorOS 13 Android skin as its sister company's devices. I like some parts of it. Like I've said before, I really enjoy the rapid scrolling multitasking ribbon, but personally, I also found the design pretty ugly, so I used the Niagara launcher for most of my time with it, and it seems to work fine. Some dings only count against the phone in some regions. Even though this is a global release, the phone isn't planned for the US, so while it does work on T-Mobile in my native New York City, over the week I've used it, it's dropped back to edge annoyingly often when handing off between 4G and 5G. It just takes toggling airplane mode to fix, but it's still an annoyance. This is also the only foldable I can remember that warns you against using your thumb to press into the hinge area when you're closing it, which brings to mind the reality of service and repair. If you break this thing, Oppo has been pretty quiet about the kind of repair options you can expect. Those downsides are counterbalanced by the price. 850 GBP, 100 pounds less than the Razer 2022 costs at press time, and 50 pounds less than the Galaxy Flip 4, which factors in a promotional discount Samsung is currently running that, at this point in that product's life cycle, seems all but permanent. And Oppo does give you a lot that Samsung doesn't offer. Double the storage, a clear case, a rapid charger, even a screen protector pre-fitted to the cover display. Also, while I'd normally prefer the purple option, the phone is quite a looker in this astral black colorway, which has a stone-like shimmer and a textured wave pattern on the hinge. Very nice. The lower price was probably helped along by the use of a MediaTek Dimensity 9000 Plus processor from last summer instead of something newer. And even though I wonder what effect that might have on Oppo's promise to keep this phone current across four years of platform updates and five years of security, the silicon sure held its own from a performance standpoint. I never felt like I was waiting on the device to catch up to my inputs. I even pushed World of Warships Blitz to ultra settings with unlimited frame rate, and it didn't stutter. The speakers are loud, the haptics fantastic, and phone calls are just as clear as you have a right to expect in 2023. And on the subject of expectations, that's a lot of good mixed in with a fair bit of mediocre just the kind of mix you'd anticipate from a first-generation product. For me, Samsung's consistent performance and more complete feature set will keep me on the Flip 4, but Oppo's invisible crease, more fun camera, and luxurious cover display have done something crucial. They've made that Flip 4 feel dated. 
If Oppo can learn to make software that harnesses all the potential of its hardware, it'll become the thing I've wanted for years. A serious competitor to a seemingly complacent Samsung. When considered together with its book-style sibling, I think the Find N2 Flip is a strong sign that that's just what Oppo intends to become. Folks, I wrote this review after seven days with a Find N2 Flip review sample provided by Oppo, which also provided travel, lodging, and entertainment during my stay in London to cover the phone's launch event. I should also mention that I also occasionally produce sponsored content for MediaTek. But as always, the companies whose products I review receive no right to edit, approve, or even see my reviews before their release, as might be obvious from my conclusions. Oppo and MediaTek are seeing this for the first time right alongside you, and the only company that paid for this video was Displate. And folks, more folding phones are on the horizon, I'm very excited to say. Please subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube and stay tuned for coverage on those from Mobile World Congress at the end of this month. Until next time, from Michael Fisher, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.